Hi y'all, welcome back to my shop. And our friend uh, Miliano Achival was visiting me from uh, Maui uh, and we went up to the uh, symposium together. He shipped some uh, very nice burl back in some uh, flat rate boxes and I wound up with some scraps and I'm trying to figure out how to best deal with them. So I, I had some tiny little cutoffs of, from Honduran rosewood, it was gorgeous. So I, I sized them where I could use them for something. Uh, discs for box tops, birdhouse ornaments, or, or something similar. Now I've got this one piece, this is going to be the topic of this video, okay. I've got this piece of white manzanita burl trying to figure out what to do with this odd size. So what I've decided to do is turn it over and make a, a little bowl blank. Uh, I'll have to decide whether I'll put a glue block here to fasten it or not. Uh, but let's get started. So we're going to take this over to the bandsaw and, and, and cut it out. This corner here, who knows, maybe I can make a, a pin blank or, or a finial or something out of it. Maybe the same thing with this little piece on the end. We'll see. Uh, it looks like it has some grain orientation. It's running kind of this way, so we'll see what it, what, what that looks like. Bandsaw safety. When you're cutting uh, odd shaped pieces of wood, you've got to be very mindful. Are you going to have a situation where, you know, you, you got to keep your fingers away, obviously, but uh, you're going to have, have the wood with an unsupported edge that's going to cause it to rotate on you. Here's a piece uh, that I, tr I trimmed off that had, you know, the very odd shape and, and, and it wasn't supported. So the trick that I used, I put a piece of tape on it and I, uh, Turner's tape, and then I clamped it with a flat side like this, both, both pieces resting on some flat, clamped it, then I could use this as a movable fence to trim off those odd pieces. Uh, so, you know, that's just, just lots of different ways, you just got to be mindful of, of safety. Now in this case, because of the way this unsupported edge makes me kind of nervous, what I'm going to do is look at it and say, okay, let's cut off some of this edge, maybe cut off the bottom and square it up. So this is the shape that I was using, actually, this piece of tape, uh, this, this roll of tape. So what I'm going to do is just mark the edge over here, and then I'll go ahead and, and square it up with, with this, and then I think that's going to make it a little bit safer. Oh, I had one piece that was was cornered and curved, and I, I wanted to cut off that curve, and I cut off this so I could put the, the corner in here to support it as a movable fence. So just got to think about little, little tricks. So we're going to square this up, turn on the... People put a screw, they put a nail, but I tell, I tell you what, the easiest way is to make you a miniature birdcage all that'll, that will really drill a hole and, and uh, secure these templates. Scraps about the size of a pen blank can be used for any number of things. Uh, for example, as I'll show you in a moment, it can be used as a uh, twig for a, or a little branch piece for a piece of uh, fruit. You can use it for 
uh, parts for uh, other projects such as in the activity scene where there's any number of small parts that you could use this for such as a gift from the three wise men or, or what have you. You can always use them for turning finials uh, for a box top uh, or as uh, part of a Christmas tree ornament. I, I turn finials frequently for birdhouse ornaments so a piece this size would be, be nice for that. Um, and then of course little perches for birdhouse ornaments. Uh, these types of scraps look nice although probably something that delicate you might be better off than just a piece of straight grained exotic wood. Maybe you're turning a couple of pieces of fruit or a bowl of fruit and you want to put a little stem on them. Boy, there's nothing better. Walnut's okay, but there's a little piece of burl will really dress it up. So I've already got this one turned and I'm just going to polish it before I part it off. Bring us to where we store things. I keep little pieces like this in a tiny little box, and it's everything from birdhouse perches to tiny finials or a little little laminated piece of burl, maybe with some veneer and a reinforcing rod that I'm going to use to uh, add to make a more elegant birdhouse roof. So I keep these handy and, and inserts. I like to keep little small inserts, which is a great thing. You know, everybody's got a different way of storage, uh, storing. I keep very small pieces of exotics and, and uh, small uh, burl scraps. This is really in the wrong box. I'm probably over here. here. In, in one box for little pieces like this for uh, finials and, and, and such. Not larger pieces such as the kind of scraps that I might use for a birdhouse uh, blank. By the way, birdhouse blanks, they, they, they can be a challenge to have odd shapes, but you don't want to throw them away. I've got a video on uh, link above on how you you chuck these small birdhouse uh, roof uh, scraps. Larger pieces like this, you know, you might store them somewhere else. When you go to cutting up uh, small blanks, I think it pays to have either some samples or, or uh, some way to measure. <coughs> Excuse me, here's an example. This is a little template I use to help me size the bottoms of birdhouse uh, roof roof scraps. Um, I've got this little piece of PV, uh, PVC pipe that I use to check uh, roundness on, on a sphere, but it's also the right size for a pendant, so I can take a scrap of, of, of wood and say, whoop, that's a little bit small. This one, this one will fit, fit just right. The other uh, way is if you have little tiny storyboards, for example, that's, that's an egg size that wide. There, it's, you, you can make sure that you've got a piece that's big enough for an egg. In this case, it's uh, uh, just a little bit, little bit too small. The other way is to have a sample like a pen. If you're doing pen blanks, uh, have you a sample pen blank so you can kind of quickly, quickly size them. Um, you get a scrap like this, what can you do with it? In this case, you know, I'd square that up to for something like a pen blank or for other small, long items. Could be a finial. If, you've got, uh, if you make finials for birdhouse ornaments, or, or top of a box, uh, you know, you might want to have a, a sample size that you can mark it off with. Always mark the, the, the type of species of wood, in this case, Honduran, Honduran rosewood, because a year from now or three years from now, it all blends together and it blurs, or in this case, a piece of cheesewood burl, a.k.a. Gimpal. Write it down, uh, so if you share it with someone, they've got it. If you can't remember, like me, two years later when it all comes, uh, all gets mixed up, write it down. My favorite way of mounting uh, blocks for inserts, uh, pendants, that sort of thing, is to use a glue block, in this case a threaded glue block, but you could put this in the chuck, and then use Turner's tape. So that's what I'm going to do for this, for this one. Just kind of cut off one small piece. This just stuff is just extremely, extremely strong. I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to cut a little slice on the end to, to pull it up. And take that off. And this is a little piece of manzanita burl. I'm going to roughly center it. Make a box insert. I'm going to save for a future date. 
Yeah. Then bring up tailstock support, put it under compression for oh maybe 10 minutes or so so it'll set up. And we're going to round this off, thin it down a little bit, maybe shape a little bit before I put it in the box. be the front, this is going to be the back, so I always put just the slightest chamfer to make it slip into the recess it's going to be used for it. I'm going to leave that tailstock support as long as I can. Get this in shape where it'll be ready to actually drop into the top of the box if I need it. So I'm going to go ahead and use the negative brake scraper and shear scrape a little bit. It's got a light, little detail there. So you can use these round uh, burl scraps or exotic wood or whatever for inserts for any number of, of projects. Uh, they work very well for pendant necklaces. You can do them for inserts on the tops of boxes such as shown in this uh, jewelry box or in this ash box where I just decorated the wood with some contrasting uh, insert uh, material or or for the side of this uh, canteen, Roman canteen uh, box. Lots of things you can use these insert discs for. It's slightly larger blanks, you, you know, open up a lot of opportunities for creativity. It could be anything from a Christmas tree ornament to a gonk ha hat or a, uh, an awl handle or, or a box. Now, a piece like this, you'd say, well, that's not a burl scrap. That's too large. I'll make a bowl out of it. Well, the problem is this is a piece of cherry and it's been it's riddled with ant, uh, ant tracks and holes, so I don't know what I'm going to get out of this. So let's, uh, let's open it up and see what we've, we've got to, to work on. In this scrap, I have really very little bird, uh, uh, very little burl uh, figure. It's mostly straight grain cherry. Uh, there's not a lot of burl here, so frankly, this piece uh, I could probably salvage the cherry for for something, but there's no real burl there. Now let's, let's keep moving on to the other part. Although you know all these wormholes that might uh, might have promise for something, I'll have to think about that a little bit. <laughs> 